Hey guys, Quiv, uh, the Lazy Geek here. Um, so, in the last video I was showing a bit my equipment, uh, which I have here. Obviously, it's not night yet, although it looks like we might be having some good weather coming uh, our way. But, um, one of the things that was noticed on one of the comments that video was that this electronic filter wheel um, here actually is in the wrong um, direction. And the bulge that we see here should be actually pointing towards the camera. Uh, the reason that is, is that the uh, filters in here, they're not like exactly in the middle of this filter wheel. Uh, there's more space on the, spa on, the, um, on the side where the filters can be screwed in or in my, or in my case, I just like pop them in, which means that, and the space they can be screwed in is right now the, the thing that I have towards the camera, which is not good because that means there's a more distance between the filters and the camera sensor, and that can induce uh, vignetting. Now, uh, so that's something to remember when you set it up, and it is actually in the ZW documentation. I was just lazy and I didn't read it properly. Uh, you want to uh, make sure that the bulge there is going towards the camera. Now, I am not going to change it um, because my filters are actually 36 millimeters um, di um, yeah, diameter filters and the sensor, the biggest sensor that I have is um, the uh, ASI uh, 1600 MM Pro which is a micro four thirds uh, sensor with I think a 22 millimeters diag diagonal something like that so it's not a problem for this uh, for my 36 millimeters uh, filters but what we're going to do is we're going to also uh, I'm going to show you a bit how to check what filter size could cause vignetting for your system and if you feel like it and hopefully I'll manage we can look at it um, geometrically why like based on the uh, on the focal ratio and the size of the sensor and the distance between uh, the sensor and the filter, we can see, we can compute how much, uh, how big the sensor should be. So let's do that together. And again, through the magic of editing, I'll be uh, right back and I'll be this time in front of my computer. So see you there. Whew. And here I am uh, with the computer and we can keep looking at our setup on the computer di directly. So. Uh, let's start. So I'll put the link in the description uh, below. Um, there is a fancy tool to compute the uh, filter size that you need uh, for your particular setup. And it's on this awesome site called Astronomy, Astronomy Tools. And you can see you can input to your telescope information, your camera information, and it will give you a re recommended minimum filter size based on that. So my telescope it's actually in the list, but the, the pH corrector that I use, which reduces the uh, focal length a little bit, is not. So I'm just going to put my stuff manually, but you can actually, you know, choose your telescope directly in the list. For me, my aperture is not 800, but 200, I wish. Uh, my focal length is 780. And uh, my filter to CC distance, I put it at 26.5. There's a good reason for that. So if I go to um, the ZW website and I look at the specs for my uh, 533MC Pro, I can look at this diagram and we can see that the distance between the sensor here and the camera flange is 6.5 millimeters. And it's exactly the same thing for my other camera. Um, which should be somewhere here. We can see the distance again from the sensor to the camera flange is 6.5 millimeters. And then I want to take uh, the filter wheel again on the ZW website. We can see the total uh, width of the uh, filter wheel, wheel is 20 uh, millimeters. Um, and I will just assume that my filter is like as far as humanly possible or even physically possible or even worse than um, uh, to the camera sensor. And so uh, I'm gonna add those two measures to get 26.5 millimeters, but that's really a worst case scenario. Okay, so now we're there and now we can choose the camera directly in there. Um, this I can just use as is. We're gonna use, I'm gonna use the, the uh, bigger sensor, obviously with the bigger diagonal, because that way if it's okay for my camera, uh, for the bigger sensor camera, it's going to be okay for the smaller sensor camera. 
So let's just click on that. The diagonal, this, which is the measure that we need, is automatically filled in. And we can see that for that, my recommended uh, minimum filter size is 28.22 uh, millimeters. And my filters are 36 millimeters, so I shouldn't have any issue. Okay, so for those who are not interested, who are just interested in the results, here's the result. I know that I'm fine, and I'm not gonna change anything uh, because it would mean I would need to retake my flat frames, and I'm too lazy for that. The lazy geek, after all. Um, and also, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, kind of stuff. Uh, but definitely as best practice when you set up your equipment, you should put the bulge towards uh, the camera. For anyone who's interested, I'm going to go into the theory of that uh, formula that we looked at just now, um, because I was wondering where it was coming from. And so I just like did by myself on a piece of paper and uh, we'll do that together if you're interested. If you're not, Thank you for watching and uh, please subscribe, uh, like, whatever. Um, and uh, for the brave people among us, well, no, not the brave people, but let's say the interested people among us, let's go to uh, the theory. So see you there. Okay, so here we are. Let's divide this page into two so we, have, we can have the main uh, diagram. So the main diagram will be simply, we have um, a lens with its I have no idea how you call it, the center axis. So I have the center axis here. Uh, we have a lens like this. Okay, and it's a converging lens. Obviously it works for a mirror as well. We'll just use a lens in this example. And we have the focal distance here. So I have here, F is the focal distance. Cool, so uh, my sensor is here. And we're going to say that I'm going to just treat with its height. I'm going to say the height of the sensor is H. And uh, then we can draw some lines there. So the standard um, thing to have is uh, the light uh, that passes through the center of the lens is unaffected. So we can draw a ray of light uh, like that. If I draw a ray of light that is uh, parallel, to the, uh, to the axis of the lens. I'll get something uh, similar, but I'll get something that's parallel there. So it's like uh, coming from infinity. So we have targets coming from infinity. A uh, little uh, disconnect there, but everything's fine. Now we have to look at the worst case scenario. So we have an angle here, which we can call alpha one, and an angle here that we can call alpha one as well, because they're identical, those two lines here are parallel, so alpha one, alpha one, they're both the same. Then we can look at the worst case scenario. The worst case scenario will be a light ray that comes from the very edge of uh, the light of the lens here. So that's the very worst case scenario. It's the highest incidence angle that you can get. Something like this. And it would come from infinity uh, uh, as well. I'm actually not completely sure what would happen. We can draw whatever we want. It's not super relevant. Um, so we have another angle here that I can call alpha two. Okay, now we can add here a sensor. Uh, sorry, a filter. So we have our sensor. We know that its height is H and its height will be really half of the uh, diagonal. So diagonal over two, right? And then we have the uh, filter itself. So let's say we have a filter that's far away from the sensor. It's a filter uh, here. And we want it to be at least as tall as this light ray here, right? Otherwise, uh, we'll get vignetting because the filter doesn't cover all of the light rays from the lens. So we want the height of the sensor to be at least this. So this height of the sensor will be equal to the height of the, uh, sorry, the height of the filter will be equal to the height of the sensor, H, plus another quantity um, that we can call, uh, I don't know, epsilon. So this is an additional length. So the, um, and it will be the radius of the minimum radius of the filter that I want. So we have things like the radius of the filter will be equal to H, plus epsilon, right? So that's something that's, um, that's very basic, very visible immediately. 
then we can look at other things. We can see that alpha 1, this angle alpha 1, the tangent of alpha 1, it doesn't even matter that it's a tangent or not. Uh, we can take the ratio between h here and uh, the focal distance here. We can say that tangent of alpha 1 is equal to h divided by f. Very simply enough. And alpha 2, we can see that uh, the um, tan tangent of alpha 2 will be equal to what? We have, it's not epsilon because epsilon is this distance here. It's not half of the uh, lens uh, diameter. It is actually the lens radius the lens radius minus h, minus the height of the of the sensor, right? So it will be this distance from this point to this point, and that will be equal to, uh, we'll call it the radius of the lens, radius of the lens, um, divided by the, uh, sorry, the radius of the lens minus the height of the sensor, so h, divided by uh, the focal length. So we have this. One thing also to, to note is that the radius of uh, the lens is actually half of your aperture, right? So it's aperture over two. Okay, so we have those basic uh, quantities here that we've identified to, uh, to find out uh, the, um, uh, what would be the height of uh, my filter that I need. There's another uh, quantity that uh, we absolutely need, uh, which is um, the uh, distance between the uh, filter and the sensor. And I'm going to call this distance, uh, distance between filter and sens sensor, DFS. So DFS, what can we do with it? There's another thing we can say is that tangent of alpha 2 is equal to this quantity that we saw here. It's also equal to epsilon, this uh, length here, divided by the um, distance between the filter and the sensor, so which is DFS. And now we have everything we need to actually find out what is this minimum RF that, uh, that we need for that. I'll just compute uh, the epsilon. So what do we have? Where do we have the epsilon appear in those formulas? We have it here, right? So we have epsilon over uh, DFS equal to the radius of the lens minus H uh, over F, right? So uh, we have something immediately coming up now and we can keep going. So uh, we are looking for epsilon, right? So now we know that epsilon is equal to uh, radius of the lens minus the height of the diagonal uh, of the sensor divided by two over the focal length of, uh, of the lens. And this will be multiplied by DFS. Okay, so now we already have a good, uh, a good, uh, uh, value of epsilon, and we know that what we're looking for is actually um, h plus epsilon times 2, because that will be the diameter of the filter, uh, but we can have just like h plus epsilon, so the, uh, the radius of the filter will be equal to rl minus h over f uh, times dfs plus uh, h. And here we have the actual uh, formula by which we'll see what the uh, the, the actual um, filter radius in this case we could just multiply everything by two to get uh, the diagonal is and this is what uh, we were looking for and I'm gonna apply that in Excel uh, from now so I'll be right back at the computer and we're back at the computer with a spreadsheet not with Excel <laughs> Uh, because I don't have Excel, simple as that. Um, okay, so I'm looking at a spreadsheet where I have put in the formula to have the radius, which is pretty much what we just computed together, and uh, the minimum filter um, 
diameter will also be computed as twice that. Okay, so RL is, what was RL? It's half the aperture. So for me, half the aperture is 100 millimeters. Um, H is the diagonal of the sensor uh, divided by two. Uh, the diagonal of my sensor was uh, 22.18. So divided by two, that's 11.09. Not 9th of November or 11th of uh, September, but uh, 11.09. Then we have the focal length, which I know is seven and, uh, 780, and the distance to between the filter and the sensor is uh, 26.5 millimeters. Okay, and we get a minimum filter diameter of uh, 28.22. Uh, let's compare 28.22. I think we're good. That's probably the right formula. So it's great that it works. And uh, it's always good to be able to kind of see why those formulas actually work. So um, yeah, sorry, this was a long topic from a very, very small comment, but that was a great comment. So thank you if, you ha if you've uh, been with me for this whole video and uh, like, subscribe, whatever. And uh, see you next time. Cheers.